We were in one of the most dangerous regions in the world for trafficking. We were undercover uh, pretending to be doctors doing a, uh, a medical clinic to find the kids who were being trafficked. Um, and on our way out, the traffickers who brought the kids to us to be medically cleared, uh, they themselves were you know, served by this medical clinic. But then when they were done, they decided, why not just kill them and take their cars and take their money and take everything they, they have because there's no repercussion for us. There's no legal system that could hurt us. And so they surrounded us. And so we had nothing. It was just us and them, us with nothing, them with 400 weapons pointed at us. And I didn't know what to do. And so I did something that was not necessarily tactically sound, but I felt I should. I went into one of our cars I closed the door, I pulled out my tattered copy, my missionary copy of the Book of Mormon, and I just held it. And I, and I, uh, I thought of every miracle story of the Book of Mormon, every angel story, because that's what we needed. We needed an angel. We needed a miracle. Remembered this scripture. The scripture that saved my life from traffickers is Alma chapter 58, verse 11. He says that we had been given assurances by God and that we could have faith in those assurances. And so he knew that none of them would be killed. And I remember thinking to myself, this is a true principle. I have been given assurances of the Lord that this work is to go on. It wasn't gonna end right now. I had received those assurances and so I could put my faith in those assurances. And when I stepped out of the car, I looked up after in this state of prayer and meditation and pondering this scripture, and everyone had gone. And my operators told me, we don't know what happened, they just walked away. We got in the cars, and I said, guys, let's just go. I don't know where everybody went, they're gone. And then we just drove out. Despite him saying that it's classified, this actually took place near the Dominican border. It's important to note that though God saved Tim Ballard and his team, they failed in saving any child that day. This is only a preliminary episode into Tim Ballard and OUR's credibility. How they define things like investigations, what they really mean by comprehensive investigations, how Tim Ballard and them respond to adversity, how they put their heads in the sand. They're in denial of true and credible allegations of misogynistic behavior, sexual assault, threats and intimidation of witnesses, allegations of fraud. When they were threatened to be called out about it, they leaned on their other donors to threaten people. Or worse, on more than three different occasions, I have heard them actually say that they would put X person or that organization into an upcoming documentary by Joe Berlinger. We want to make sure that they are disarmed, that they can no longer threaten or intimidate witnesses or have you hide behind NDAs. If you or anyone you know has been the victim of harassment, intimidation, or threats by Operation Underground Railroad, its donors, its members, or anyone affiliated with it, do not hesitate to contact myself or Lynn Packer. I will put my email somewhere on the screen, but it's Damien at AmericanCrimeJournal.com. Now, it's quite clear to most that understand and know about human trafficking that Tim Ballard and Operation Underground Railroad know nothing about human trafficking. We know this because it goes against what the experts say. That's people that's worked in the field, have done studies, law enforcement, credible agencies. 
It even goes against people that's worked in the industries that they claim they work in. How do we know? Well, when Tim Ballard speaks about human trafficking, he speaks in platitudes and uses cliches. These are not professionals. These are clearly people that have watched too many movies and thinks that this is what human trafficking is. This message is also for Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard, you need to quit hiding behind your attorneys and be a man and address these allegations like a man would, a responsible owner of a nonprofit. You need to quit talking to God. You need to talk to the actual victims you supposedly rescue. And you need to talk to actual professionals in this industry. Humble yourself to learn about this so-called craft you've uh, developed or whatever you call it now. Because clearly this warrior, this, uh, this moral authority, this entire, you know, I'm working to, for a higher power so no one's to stand in our way. We are the experts. It's just not working. You do not know what you're talking about. You're not professional. And clearly, you have some serious problems. In light of the recent New York Times article into Operation Underground Railroad and Tim Ballard's response in how he distorts and misrepresents what a legitimate article is about, we're going to go over his response to a BuzzFeed article last year, which I recently learned of. This is going to illustrate perfectly how Ballard distorts, misrepresents an article's content and context. So let's get into Tim Ballard, founder of Operation Underground Railroad, and his response to the BuzzFeed article. First, I recommend you watch his response in its entirety. I recommend you do so so he can't say we're piecemealing this, and then come back and watch our video. Now, I'm not going to read the article. It's 8,000 words. If you want to read it, go to BuzzFeed.com. It's the first article of a six-part extensive series into Tony Robbins and his 40-year history of sex abuse and harassment. It ultimately ends with him attempting to rape a 15-year-old child, which over two dozen witnesses corroborate details surrounding it. So here is the article. What Tim Ballard and Tony Robbins does with this damning piece is they represent that it's about a woman named Anna Lay Campos. And make no mistake, Ballard will say that BuzzFeed outed her, exposed her, and victimized her. He calls her the star witness dozens of times in this article. He will claim another dozen times that BuzzFeed took a small portion of her therapy of Tony calling her a bitch and blaming her for her abuse and distorts it. So what is the article really about? This article is titled, Leak Records Reveal Tony Robbins Berated Abuse Victims and Former Followers Accuse Him of Sexual Advances. It's by investigative reporters Jane Bradley and Katie J.M. Baker. This article details numerous credible accounts of sexual harassment and goes into a series of audio recordings where Tony Robbins verbally abuses and insults and blames women for their physical, emotional, and verbal abuse. In fact, Tony will even say in the audio that emotional abuse don't exist, that it's an excuse. So what we have to do is go three quarters of the way down. This small 400-word bit is supposedly about a woman named Anna Lay Campos. 
In December of 2018, she attended a Date with Destiny seminar by Tony Robbins, which thousands of people are in attendance, and you have to pay somewhere between $4,000 and $8,000 to attend. BuzzFeed obtained a 58-minute segment, a recording, where Tony Robbins verbally abuses this woman, blames her for her abuse. In fact, all victims are to blame for their abuse, according to Robbins on this audio. But do you see what Tim Ballard and Tony Robbins has done here? They take a small portion of an 8,000-word article, 400 words of it, and distorts to the public, absolutely and grossly misrepresents this as the entire article. Worse, Tim Ballard, in his response video, he takes this small portion and lies, twists, fabricates the entire encounter in his response video. Ready to watch Tim Ballard distort this article, this portion, and lie to your face? Lie to you knowingly and weaseling your attention away from the real abuses, the child sexual abuse, and all the sexual harassment. Let's do this. Hey guys, Tim Ballard here, founder of Operation Underground Railroad. Uh, something's hit the news and I feel like I have to comment on it. Uh, BuzzFeed did a story making some severe allegations against Tony Robbins about how he has uh, damaged or hurt women uh, over the years. And, you know, people said, don't weigh into this. You know, people know that Tony, of course, is connected to our foundation. We're one of his big charities. Don't weigh in, Tim. And you know, I dug into this. I spent all day yesterday investigating everything. And I thought, I'm in a very unique position to talk about this. One, because I've spent a lifetime finding evidence, substantial evidence, and using that evidence to rescue women and children and others who have been hurt and been abused. So I come at this from a very unique perspective. I'm very pro-victim. In just 24 hours by his own admission, against the advice of what probably was OUR's board members, lawyers, donors, friends, and family, Tim Ballard distorts, misrepresents, and lies about the first article of a six-piece investigative series into his friend and OUR supporter, Tony Robbins. The six-piece investigative series ultimately ends with Robbins accused of sexually assaulting a child, which two dozen witnesses corroborate the details surrounding it, including the victim, two witnesses to the actual assault, and the owners of the summer camp that were good friends with Robbins. I have to talk about what's going on here. Um, I'm going to tell you about Tony Robbins. I know him very well. Uh, Tony's not someone who's just supported our rescue missions uh, from afar. Uh, he's risked life and limb. He has gone undercover. He has done things that I'm going to tell you about in a second. But there's, there's another part of this BuzzFeed story that I just I have to talk about first. The part I think that's most distressing to me. Um, the star witness, uh, Anneli Campos, the star witness in this story... Uh, against Tony. False. Tim Ballard is either confused or deliberately lying about the first piece in the BuzzFeed series. Maybe both. There were no star witnesses, nor was Andale Campos ever named. The portion of the 8,000-word first article that allegedly is referring to Ms. Campos was just... 400 words in one example of many examples into Tony Robbins' conduct. More importantly, this was towards the end of the article, in which this very small portion, which is less than 5% of the entire article, is just experts chiming in on exactly what is going on here. Here's a woman who's claiming she's being verbally abused by her husband day in and day out, and what does Tony Robbins do but blame her and verbally abuses her by calling her names and disrespecting her? Um, let me tell you her story. She's a woman that came to get therapy from Tony. Uh, she had a reasonable expectation of privacy during that therapy session. Uh, people that were in the room had signed non-disclosures. They wouldn't to leak these things or, or talk about them. And she has this experience. And someone leaked part of that therapy. BuzzFeed proudly put it out there. False. First, Robbins is not a licensed counselor, therapist, psychiatrist, psychologist, or medical professional of any sort, nor does he advertise to be such. 
He is a motivational speaker. Second, Ballard's claim that Miss Ocampos had a reasonable expectation of privacy is preposterous. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Not only does Tony Robbins sell tickets to hundreds, sometimes thousands of people to attend each and every one of his seminars, but it is recorded and videotaped by Robbins and his team. In addition to signing NDAs, that's non-disclosure agreements, attendees must also sign a waiver, not just releasing Robbins and his team of any and all liability and damages, but also allowing him to use their name, photos, video, audio, their likeness, and their story, whether true or false, to sell, distribute, and advertise for more seminars, books, videos, CDs, and advertise their experiences, both real or imagined, solely for the benefit of Tony Robbins and his corporation. So no, there was no expectation of privacy, both as it was explicitly stated verbally and contractually. In fact, by virtue of common sense, there was no expectation of any privacy here. Lay me down in dark, cover me in stars, will you make my bed? intervention this this therapy and it's part of it of a two-hour session it's like uh, two minutes where Tony is showing tough love and he's using a certain technique uh, that may not be for everybody but here's the problem for BuzzFeed is it it worked for Miss Campos this is false and misleading Ballard is now representing and perpetuating that this recording released by BuzzFeed was part of a larger two-hour session with Miss Campos alone. Fact, there are hundreds, sometimes thousands of people that are in attendance during these seminars. This recording was part of a seminar which she is obviously in the audience. She comes up to the microphone and briefly describes her problem or situation. Just as the recording indicates, Campos wasn't the star of the seminar, just like she wasn't the star of the BuzzFeed article. Uh, Ms. Campos has produced her own YouTube video. You Leave me when I'm gone, when all is said and done. Days are never wasted when we're up in space. And take my final breath with all. Mr. Ballard appears either confused or he's just deliberately being dishonest. Annale Campos debunked nothing. She confirmed exactly the point the BuzzFeed article was trying to make. 
The portion of the BuzzFeed article that speaks about the Miss Compost incident and several others briefly is solely about the manner in which Robbins, who is not a trained professional, speaks and berates victims of abuse, sexual abuse, rape, and domestic violence, followed by several trained professionals that listen to the portion of that tape. Just as Miss Compost says, she doesn't want to say that her therapy works for everyone or even represent it to be that. She just says that it helped her. Last but not least, if victim blaming and berating victims of abuse and rape was so effective, why do they need to pay Tony Robbins to scream and blame them for their abuse? And saying that this was sacred and, and saying BuzzFeed took it out of context. And here's the most concerning part. Now, really listen to this part. Because as I look at the whole thing, and I digested this over the last 48 hours, as, as a guy who looks for evidence... <laughs> Tim is once again being deliberately dishonest here. He's released a response video 24 hours after this article was released, but now claims he spent 48 hours investigating it, leaving no stone unturned. More importantly, Tim, what evidence did you procure during your investigation? And what are you presenting to us that contradicts the BuzzFeed reporting? So far, you've presented nothing, and you've not provided a single expert witness to everything that you're stating so far. The only evidence I have found, sure evidence of abuse anywhere with all these actors in this story, is BuzzFeed damaging, potentially victimizing Ms. Campos. Let me explain what I mean by that. I've worked in the field of, of helping survivors and victims for 17 years, intimately. And I know one thing, that you cannot falsely label someone a victim without victimizing them. What has OUR done for the last seven years, Mr. Ballard, except victimize women and children and make millions of dollars in the process? If someone is a survivor, you don't come out and say, you're a victim, you're a victim. And that's exactly what BuzzFeed did to Ms. Collins. False. BuzzFeed said nothing of the sort. Rather, the story was about Tony Robbins' conduct and their allegations of abuse, sexual harassment, and sexual assault against him. And this article, in particularly his therapy sessions, where he victimizes victims, both by professional and psychiatric standards and legal definitions, and even by your own definition, Mr. Ballard. They needed a star witness, and so they painted her as a victim when she herself came out and said, no, I'm a survivor. And Tony's the one who saved me. False. And again, Miss Campos was not the focus of the series, nor was she the focus of the first article. In fact, and again, to be crystal clear, the sentences about Tony Robbins and the recordings involving Andale Campos, the focus wasn't the story, it wasn't their opinions, feelings, or even part of the narrative. The focus was solely on how Robbins, who is not a trained professional, who has been accused of sexual harassment, sexual assault, and eventually the sexual assault of a minor, how he views and speaks to women who claim to be the victims of abuse and sexual assault. That's all that portion about Andale Campos was about. Now, whatever you think about this BuzzFeed story, do me a favor, step outside of that for just one second. And just follow me on this. Imagine that you went to a therapy session with reasonable expectation of privacy. Your therapist, your coach, your life coach is giving you therapy that you know what it was. You wanted it. You went for it. And it worked. False. And once again, you're trying to sweep this into a brief summary like you do human trafficking, and it's not working. You're not getting away with it, Mr. Ballard. Tony Robbins is not a licensed therapist, counselor, psychiatrist, or medical professional. This, again, was not an individual session with the person in question, but a seminar which Robbins' only interaction with Ms. Campos was brief. There was no reasonable expectation of privacy. The event was recorded, taped, which attendees signed not only a non-disclosure agreement, but a waiver of liability and release permitting Robbins and his company to advertise, sell, promote and or use the story and or likeness in both real presentation or for marketing material. For the last time, 
there was no reasonable expectation of privacy. Everyone in attendance was put on notice. And it helped you. And it saved you. And it was sacred to you. Okay, these are the words that Ms. Campos is using. And then a news agency, in this case BuzzFeed, takes a small piece of that and throws it out for the whole world to see. Now imagine, this is you. This is your therapy. How would you feel? Except it wasn't therapy. And false. BuzzFeed never represented that clip and many others as such. Listen and understand that Terminator is out there. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear. And it absolutely will not stop ever until you are dead. Would you feel that BuzzFeed had your back? Would you feel that BuzzFeed was protecting the, white, the rights of women, in your case, your, your, your therapy being exposed this way and exploited this way? Because BuzzFeed claims to be the, the great protector of women. That's how this whole piece is put forth. This is the pot calling the kettle black. Tim relies solely on an appeal to emotion here. The audio used by BuzzFeed in numerous encounters with women was intended to show how Robbins, who has been accused by numerous women over the course of four decades of sexual harassment, sexual assault, and misconduct, how he views and speaks to survivors of rape and domestic violence. Okay. Um, there's other stories in there, and I really can't comment on those stories. The things that happened allegedly 20, 30 years ago when Tony was single... Ballard spent the last 24 hours investigating the BuzzFeed article, yet the only thing he comments on and offers his lifetime of unique experience and his special skill set is based entirely on a video that is 1 minute and 40 seconds long. So his comprehensive investigation spanning 24 hours was to speak with Tony, watch Andalea Campos' 1 minute and 40 second video, and fabricate and misrepresent the entire BuzzFeed article. Again, it was just the first article of a six-part series. And you know, I dug into this. I spent all day yesterday investigating everything, and I thought, I'm in a very unique position to talk about this. One, because I've spent a lifetime finding evidence, substantial evidence, and using that evidence to rescue women and children and others who have been hurt and been abused. So I come at this from a very unique perspective. I'm very pro-victim. And here's the most concerning part. Now, really listen to this part. Because as I look at the whole thing, and I digested this over the last 48 hours, as, as a guy who looks for evidence... So wait a minute, let me get this straight. You spent 48 hours investigating this whole thing. Of the dozens of witnesses that have corroborated sexual assault of a minor women who have consistently accused Tony Robbins of misconduct and sexual harassment, that you came to the conclusion that you have that Tony Robbins is an innocent man and that all these women, that all these witnesses are liars based entirely on the one minute and 40 second video Analei Campos released, that that's all you have, and you've dismissed dozens of victims and dozens of witnesses on a one minute and 40 second video. This is outrageous. This is horrible. You have no business working with victims of violence, of sexual abuse. This is disgusting. Uh, and read, you can, if you want to read what BuzzFeed says about it, then read what Tony says about it. Um, he, he has an open letter that's, that's widely available. Read what he says. Uh, a lot of those women have come to Tony, according to Tony's letter, saying that my words were taken out of context. They're, they didn't include everything I wanted included in there. They took it out of context. 
which is not hard to believe since we have Ms. Campos saying the very same thing, that everything was taken out of context for some story that wasn't representing the truth of what happened. Okay, so that's all I can say in terms of what happened 20 or 30 years ago. Notice he went from calling her the star witness, representing a very brief portion of an 8,000 word article, to now brushing off the most damning and credible allegations, as just 20 to 30 years ago, Tony was just a single man. This is a perfect example of how Christians, and more specifically Mormons, sum up allegations of sexual assault and child molestation. This is very typical explanation by the LDS Church, their leaders, and devout followers who substitute rape, sexual harassment, and assault as if these women were just approached by a very forward man, a very forward single man that perhaps he was just a little too forward and confident, and they became hysterical and were insulted. But just, just know this, again, the people behind this, the informants on the inside, some of former employees, disgruntled employees of, 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 of Tony, who, who now paint themselves to be some kind of moral crusaders in this fight, they supported a scheme in which a woman who, who wasn't a victim of abuse in her past came to a therapist, and they supported leaking just pieces of it, calling her a victim, saying Tony somehow hurt her. Think about the damage that could do to her when you're, when you're considering who are the true moral crusaders in this. Not only is this pathetic, it is absolutely disgusting. The tactic Ballard is employing here is right out of the LDS playbook. Ballard, by his own admission, just stated moments ago that he cannot comment on many other allegations against Tony because he knows nothing about them. Without speaking to a single witness or investigating the claims, he describes them as untrustworthy, disgruntled employees. The only problem is, it's just simply not true. Not only were the bulk of the allegations against Robin made by paying customers and devout followers of Tony Robbins, BuzzFeed went to fact-check these women's claims and it was fully supported by the former employees who had no knowledge of the allegations that were specifically made against And that's what this is about, folks. Without a shred of evidence, he dismisses the allegations as questionable, unreliable, and takes it even a step further. He alleges a motive. So in true Latter-day Saints fashion, Ballard employs a shame and guilt trip tactic here. How dare BuzzFeed run an article because it could damage the only person a small portion of an 8,000-word article was about. If that was a concern, Tony Robbins shouldn't have made her respond on his channel 24 hours after the article was released. And make no mistakes, folks. Whether this is true or not, Tim Ballard don't care. All he cares about is his reputation. And his reputation, how it's perceived if he's attached to Tony Robbins and he has been accused of some serious allegations here. Because if this was a concern of his, why is he distorting the article and lying about it, and then attaching her name to it? Worse, he suggests that if it is true or not, is irrelevant. And he says he doesn't know if it is. But that BuzzFeed shouldn't run the article solely because it might damage a former victim of Tony's. So she should just keep quiet if that's the case. Who are the true moral crusaders? in this. And please, read her book, Miss Campo. She was abused by BuzzFeed, but hey, buy her book about the same incident minus the colorful accusations and verbal assault by Tony Robbins. When she says that she was, basically she was abused by BuzzFeed, okay? I'm standing as a voice for her right now as the only victim that I see so far in this whole thing.
about Tony for a second. Tony's a dear friend. Tony is someone who has been deep in the trenches with me. He has not only helped from afar, like I said, financially, he has gone into dark places, which frankly is what he does with his other, uh, the people he helps. He goes into a dark place with them. Tim do this at every aftercare center we went to. That's who Tony is. I know that's who, it, who he is. And so when you try to attack Tony without evidence, and you try to take him down as one of the reporters openly claimed to, 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 to be as her, as her goal. BuzzFeed said nothing of the sort. There's other stories in there, and I really can't comment on those stories. The things that happened allegedly 20, 30 years ago when Tony was single. But just, just know this. Again, the people behind this, the informants on the inside, some of former employees, disgruntled employees of, 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 of Tony, who, who now paint themselves to be some kind of moral crusaders in this fight, they supported a scheme in which a woman who, who wasn't a victim of abuse in her past came to a therapist and they supported leaking just pieces of it, calling her a victim, saying Tony somehow hurt her. Think about the damage that could do to her when you're, con when you're considering who are the true moral crusaders in this. There it is, folks. You've seen it and heard it with your own ears and eyes. That's Tim Ballard. That's OUR. That's what Operation Underground Railroad is all about. And don't think that this is just a one-off. You watched him completely fabricate what this article was about. He's done the same thing with the New York Times. Now, I'm debating about doing one of those about the New York Times. I'm not a big fan of takedown videos. However, it's so distorted, and there's so many people that get wrapped in and believe that nonsense. Because what Tim, what OUR does, it's much like the LDS church, and I'm going to explain that in a little bit. They essentially ride trends. You know, that's how this organization got big. Right now, Tim Ballard is playing up on this, you know, oh, the media's pushing fake news. They hate us. It's us versus them. And in reality, they are the ones that are doing what Tim Ballard just did. They twist what the news and the media says and try to make it look like fake news. But in reality, they're getting bombarded with nothing but pure facts. And it happens all the time. Don't get me wrong. There are articles out there that might be sensationalized and what have you. But this is pure lies. This is exactly what Tim Ballard and Operation Underground Railroad are about. What makes this sick and disgusting is that Tim Ballard has fought and demanded men go to prison for human trafficking and other sex crimes for less evidence than what they have on Tony Robbins. The evidence is damning. But you'll see Tim Ballard try to advocate for someone to go to prison because he's seen him with a 14-year-old and they rapped about something in a rap song. It's disgusting. Tim Ballard will protect his own, whether they're pedophiles, junkies, they carry around child pornography. Tim Ballard will protect them. He's protecting the very people that commit the crimes that are the basis of his advocacy group. It's disgusting. The number one question I've been getting, though, the last couple of weeks is something to the effect of, like, hey, I'm a Latter-day Saint, and what's going on? Why are you and Lynn Packer saying things that are anti-Mormon? Or people ask us, what's, why are you bringing somebody's religion into this? What does that have to do with it? Ladies and gentlemen, the whole concept of OUR was founded on the Latter-day Saints' religion. In fact, Tim Ballard even claims that God asked him in the LDS temple to form OUR. And he has wild fantasies. Let me tell you something. 
we've spoke with people in his orbit, and the one word that keeps coming up about people that know Tim Ballard is the word extremist. Here's what's disgusting about his Mormon fundamentalism, though. Tim Ballard wrote a book, I think it was called The Lincoln Hypothesis, where he believes or he claims that there's proof that Abraham Lincoln read the Book of Mormon, and that's what inspired him to free black people. Now, the book he had, as controversial as this might be for people, was the Book of Mormon. Because from that point on, after he issued that Emancipation Proclamation, he starts sounding a lot like the prophets that, 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 that are reported to be prophets in the Book of Mormon, and he starts sounding like the prophets of the Old Testament, so like a prophet over, presiding over a promised land. He was, God made him a prophet for his day, for this nation. I absolutely believe that. And he received revelation like a prophet. Where else are you going to get this stuff? Yeah. Why on earth would he say such bizarre things? What, an, what a bizarre thing to say to your own people. Hey, we're wrong too, but you got to keep fighting. This is a church that wouldn't let black people come into the temple until 1978. This is a church that wouldn't let black men have the priesthood until 1978. And if anyone knows anything about the Mormon church, priesthood is not like a Catholic priest where he's the head of a congregation. Priesthood is the very basic fundamental to get into the celestial kingdom for Mormons. It's exaltation, and black people couldn't get it. The Book of Mormon is founded on white supremacy. There are churches in the United States that are avowedly anti-slavery by the 1830s, 40s, 50s. Mormonism is not one of them. Like Mormonism isn't predominantly white by accident. We were white on purpose. We were white because Brigham Young intentionally established territorial theocracy where in his vision, white men would rule over black. And he established slavery as much to keep black people out of the territory as he did to keep them as a, as a captive labor force. Mormonism was white on purpose. And he's going to sit here and try to promote that Abraham Lincoln was inspired to free the slaves after reading a book founded on the concept of white supremacy, that the Indians were cursed, afflicted with the curse of Cain. You know the story of Cain and Abel? where they made an offering to God and Cain got all his worst crop and Abel got his best flock and made the offering and uh, Cain got jealous and killed Abel because God was pleased. So they were afflicted, black people, Mexicans, Hispanics, people in the Far East, Indians, Native Americans, were afflicted with the curse of Cain. And the entire concept from day one, the moment you start reading Book of Mormon, is about being white and pure. What's in this book? It's a book that's an account of an ancient people who lived here in the Americas and lived under a covenant, lived under a covenant likened to the covenants of ancient Israel. And they called this land a promised land and they, and the righteous, when they, the people were righteous, the, the Lord blessed them when they were not righteous, they were cursed and, and, and awful things happened. The last 20, 30 years, these, the general authority or whoever's in charge of this thing have tried to water it down and try to make it look less racist and more socially acceptable, just like they're doing for the LGBTQ community because of the suicide rate in Utah. This is also a religion that's very oppressive of women. Our church didn't ordain black men to the priesthood before 1978. I don't think that came from God. That was wrong. That started to roll over into the way we talk so strictly about roles. The way I was raised, I automatically put men a step above me. 
I felt like I needed to go to a man to get permission. Men in our church are authorities and women aren't. Joseph Smith was one of the biggest human traffickers of his time. Mormons were the biggest human traffickers of white women in America as they were migrating to Utah. Joseph Smith paid for girls to marry him. He gave the parents money to marry him. He threatened them with eternal damnation, and he also offered some of them exaltation to the celestial kingdom if he allowed them to marry these teenage girls. That's human trafficking, folks. Does Tim Ballard denounce that? And what was the biggest case of proven, proven human trafficking going on just a few years ago in the United States? It was the FLDS, the Fundamentalist Latter-day Saints, Warren Jeffs, and the LDS community was protecting him. For years, hundreds of girls were trafficked through this man, dowries and sold and bought. It's completely disgusting. Oh, where, oh, where was Tim Ballard and Sean Reyes and Tony Robbins? They would not comment on this. When Tim Ballard was asked about this, he's such a fundamentalist, he won't question anything Mormon because he's afraid that he will not get general authority position soon. Think about this, folks. He claims God asked him to go to Utah to fight human trafficking, but just in the same video he makes that claim, he says, I was at the biggest point of human trafficking on the California-Mexican border. Biggest port of human trafficking. Probably 800,000 to a million kids a year. That's what Tim Ballard said. So he moves to Utah. It doesn't make sense, folks. This guy is trying to position himself to get into some type of position with the Mormon church. And it looks like he'll do a good job because he's a fantastic liar. He believes what he says. He says it with conviction. He claims he talks to God. I'm telling you, folks, you cannot enable an organization like this. In our upcoming articles, in our series Derailed, you're going to see just how sick and twisted this organization is. And the FBI agents, the experts, Homeland Security will all tell you a completely different story because Tim Ballard is a con man. But he's far worse than a con man. And there may even be evidence that organizations like OUR has actually endangered the children further. That has put out bad information about human trafficking and child sex crimes that people are misidentifying it. They don't understand what it is because there's all this confusion because this propaganda is all about only OUR can stop human trafficking. And that's nonsense because they haven't stopped any human trafficking. And they're supposedly the only ones that have the solution, but they're not stopping it. He claims that it's grown in the United States to epic proportions, but prosecutions are almost cut in half under President Trump. And that's what I mean. It's centered around the money, the LDS church, and how he could position himself as a position of authority in the Latter-day Saints organization. So next week, we're going to cover what human trafficking is, how it's defined by the United States, how it's defined by the UN, how the experts define human trafficking versus the myths. And then we're going to continue on to the rest of our series into OUR. And guys, when you find out what this organization is really doing and how it really operates, it's going to stun you. And for those of you that donated to them, I am sorry you have been scammed. You have been scammed. So again, let me thank you for your time. My name is Damian Moore. This is American Crime Journal, our derailed series, Operation Underground Railroad. You have a great night. Thank you.